Now, shifting gears, let's now talk about very, very interesting um, happenings in this country. And of course, we want to talk about IVF. And with me in studio, I'm joined by Dr. Shona Kandwala, who's a clinical director, IVF Medihill Group of Hospitals in Kenya and Rwanda. And he wants to touch base on so many critical issues about not able to give birth. These guys are doing a marvelous job. Welcome. Good morning. And good morning to you. Thank you for having me here. Karibu sana. Now, when you talk about IVF, not so many people understand. In a layman's language, what is IVF treatment? IVF stands for in vitro fertilization mm -hmm. or assisted reproduction. Mm -hmm. So it's when we have the gametes of the man and the woman, that is sperm and the eggs, mm -hmm. we manipulate them in the laboratory rather than in the body, which is naturally done. And in the laboratory, in a petri dish, we manipulate them and fertilize the egg with the sperm so that we produce an embryo which is the early form of life okay okay and okay. then we transfer that embryo into the womb of the infertile woman mm -hmm. and that is what in short is ivf okay now um maybe um what is actually the assisted reproduction what exactly it is assisted reproduction includes all these things like ivf is one part of it then there is icsi and so many other innovations that have come up so assisted reproduction basically is reproduction which is assisted by doctors okay so a woman or a inf couple which cannot conceive have to be assisted in some way or the other. Okay. So assisted reproduction is when we remove the eggs of the woman, okay. take the sperm of the man, fertilize them in the laboratory, make the embryo and then plan to, I mean, attempt to have a baby okay. or have okay. a pregnancy. Amazing. Amazing. Now, uh, when, when you talk about the terms like ICSI, you know, those are terms actually very technical medical terms as far as IVF is concerned. Maybe you can tell us now how different is it from IVF now? So when assisted re reproduction or IVF started way back in the mid 70s, mm -hmm. 1970s, okay. that time it was in vitro fertilization mm -hmm. where a single egg was taken in a petri dish okay. and 50,000 sperms, a, a, a drop containing 50,000 sperm was put on it that. Okay. So one sperm would find its way within the egg and fertilize it. So that was crudely termed as IVF. Okay. I mean, that was a loose uh, term. Then we started more specializing okay. and then we got what is called as ICSI or ICSI mm -hmm. that is intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Okay. So now we have one egg under a microscope, thousand magnification. We take one sperm and inject that sperm inside the egg okay. Okay. and then we fertilize the egg. So okay. that is ICSI. Okay. So that is, the, that is what we do nowadays in the laboratory. Okay. We don't no longer do IVF, mm -hmm. we do ICSI. Okay. So the new term of IVF is ICSI. Okay, okay. Uh, so subtle wise, we have so many people whose marriages have actually just gone apart because uh, they are unable to get a, a baby or a kid for that matter. Now, <clears throat> what's your opinion as someone who's ventured on this for quite some time? What's your opinion on just trying to maybe uh, give it a, a try in terms of now getting this um, uh, lesser treatment? What's your opinion on guys who can actually do this and it's affordability also? Now, you know, the, in, the incidence of infertility in Kenya is 20% of the, of the adult population. Okay. So one in five couples are infertile. Mm -hmm. Now, all of them don't need to go for IVF. Mm -hmm. Simple techniques and treatments can treat many of the couples. Okay. Among these infertile couples, mm -hmm. about 15 to 20 percent go for IVF. Okay. So the others, uh -huh. 80 percent can be treated almost by just plain counseling, doing some tests, okay. doing plain treatment, you know, okay. or even uh, something like insemination. Okay. So most of the couples can achieve pregnancy with that. Okay. Okay. And then those who do not then have to go for the IVF. Uh -huh. So maybe 15 to 20 percent of these infertile couples uh -huh. require to go for a higher or a specialized treatment like IVF. Okay. Now, with a video demonstration, how is actually done? How is it done? Because uh, through a video demonstration which you're about to play right now, maybe you can take us through the process itself. Now, how is it done from the egg to now the, the whole process now? So can we start with the video? Uh, absolutely. We can start with the video. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. I yeah. need to see that. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. If you can the put it on. Actually, we'll be playing it on a few. Okay, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. Director Bonoraro, all right. So uh, basically, uh, as, we, as we talk also through it now. Um, yeah, so you know mm -hmm. what we do is not this one. Mm -hmm. There is another video. Okay. This, this is showing basically the uh -huh. hatching of the. Em this is already a formed embryo. Oh. Okay. And okay. this is showing the hatching by a laser. Okay, okay. So, we, so there you see the 
the you know this bullet it's aimed on the okay. wall of the embryo okay and then the laser is pointed at that and there is a laser is fired on that okay and the wall thins out uh -huh, uh -huh, when the wall uh -huh. thins out uh -huh. it enables the hatching of the embryo and therefore the implantation inside okay. the uterus okay, okay. so this assists the mm -hmm. embryo to implant okay. this increases the chances of that lady to uh -huh. conceive uh -huh. Uh -huh. by using laser okay Okay. Laser is also used, similarly, uh -huh. laser is also used to do the biopsy of the same embryo uh -huh. in case we want to do a genetic study for that embryo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Of course, we are getting ahead of yeah. this, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, I thought we could go back to the, the, my original video where uh -huh. we sh yeah. I show you the as, as looking for it, uh, egg mean, retrieval. Absolutely. So, as we're looking for it, maybe yeah. we, can just, um, the, we can just talk about recent innovations of, uh, in IVF. So, yeah. as you know, but if I get back to your previous question. Yeah that uh, what is act actually, what are the things involved in the IVF. Mm -hmm. So what we do basically is, is when the couple comes to us, mm -hmm. we do the full investigation of the male and the female okay. partners. Okay. And then we decide what is the reason why which she's not or they are not conceiving. Okay. We decide, we get to the factor and then we try to treat the factor. So most of the times as I told you, uh, these couples can be treated by other uh, treatments than IVF. But if there is a tubal factor, that means mm -hmm. if the woman's tubes are blocked mm -hmm. or if she has got problematic fibroids or endometriosis mm -hmm. or in, we are now discovering a lot of men being infertile. Wow. Yeah. That so is. a lot well, of What sperms, are the reasons? Because now I think men are interested you in You know, this. environmental factors, stress, okay. you know, tobacco, wow. maybe sometimes, you know, there's wow. uh, mira chewing okay. and heat, general heat where okay. they stay, like okay. especially on the coast okay. or, you know. So we find a lot of male infertility now or mm -hmm. subfertility where the mm -hmm. counts are low. Mm -hmm. So in such cases when the counts are low, ICSI or ICSI helps them a lot. Okay. okay. Now how, how has freezing impacted uh, the issue of infertility? The freezing of the embryos or yeah. even the freezing of the eggs and the sperms yeah. has allowed the woman or the couple to store their gametes or their embryos uh -huh. so that if they had it one, a single attempt okay. and not succeeded and they have the extra embryos frozen. Okay. and stored for them, mm -hmm. they can use those frozen embryos mm -hmm. without going through the whole process mm -hmm. at a much lesser cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, a woman who has not decided on marriage mm -hmm. or doesn't have a partner but is getting older, mm -hmm. she can freeze her eggs and oh. that, that, that way conserve her fertility so that when she becomes older or when she finds a partner, mm -hmm. those eggs can be fertilized by the partner's sperms just by IVF and she can have a baby wow. because at 40 or 41, yeah, yeah. as you know, the fertility levels yeah. drop a lot. Yeah, yeah. So if she's around 30, 32 and she conserves her eggs and then gets married at a later stage, mm -hmm. at that time she may be finding it difficult to conceive wow. Wow. naturally wow. so she can use those eggs. Right. Similarly, a man or a woman, before they go for cancer uh, therapy, mm -hmm. you know, radiotherapy or sure. chemotherapy, mm -hmm. can conserve their sperms and eggs so that that can be used later uh -huh. when they are okay. Uh -huh. Wow, interesting. I think we have so many options as far as just the production is concerned. The modern medicine has actually made this possible. And uh, wow, from Doc Shonak, this is very amazing. But you're taking a short break. When we come back, he's mentioned about even if you hit that, uh, you hit that age of where you can actually not conceive, there's a solution for you. You can always maybe reach the doctors at Made Hill and of course him as a doctor uh, offering solutions. And I'm surprised also, I'm learning where I'm seated that indeed you cannot give up about having a baby. All that's coming to you after a short break.
you blink. Now those ones, I think you forgot to send to send them actually. Is there any way that we can do it now? Uh, or it's impossible. It's very impossible. But okay, so let's ne just next time. Let's we'll just talk. Then. Yeah, absolutely. Next time we'll actually yeah. do it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so something else is, now, who, this person who's traveling, eh? So he's actually the partner of the husband. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, let me just try something. Uh, Um, is that footage on YouTube? No, 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 no it's a video. No, it's a video. All right. So uh, it's not on YouTube. Eh? It's a, it's a video. I think they forgot just to give us the because uh, yeah, YouTube what we downloaded it was just okay. Only that uh, the person I was dealing with didn't send us the video. Yes. So we no problem. Okay. Sure. Okay. I should talk. Right, welcome back to Morning Live and Dr. Shona Kandwala is with me here in studio, clinical director, IVF Medihill group, uh, group of Action Hospitals. And the, the biggest uh, thing that I even guys are asking on social media is the cost because um, as much as we blame uh, women of infertility, trust me, the percentage of men who are not able to actually do it is amazing. And um, we have someone here uh, from uh, Water Daniel asking, so as a man, what are the causes that can make me infertile? Of course, we discussed it, and just for clarification purposes, you can just maybe answer him. Yeah, as I told you, you know, mm -hmm. environmental mm -hmm. factors, yeah. especially a lot of heat where the person is working, mm -hmm. as we have in, you know, near the Somalia border or near yeah. on the coast, yeah. many of the infertility comes from that. Mm -hmm. Also, the toxic products in the food, in the, you know, daily diet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Environmental factors like pollution, okay, etc. Okay. And now J Jabir is asking um, if I realize my woman is not um, fertile, uh, what's the best solution? Because he's, he, I see so many people breaking up because of this issue of not being able to bear a child. So, what's the solution, and uh, what's the cost? No, actually, they have to come as a couple for investigation. Okay. Both we sides. won't know what is the solution till we know what is the cause. Investigation, yeah, sure. So, okay. what is the factor? Whether the male is involved or the female is mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. As you just now said, mm -hmm. male and female are almost equally involved nowadays. Okay, okay. And we are seeing a lot of male infertility going, you okay. know, becoming higher and higher. Okay. So, okay. we need to know what is the cause in the woman. 
which okay. is making her infertile. Maybe the common reasons? Why? The common reasons could yeah. be fibroids, okay. tubal blockage, okay. because of previous infection. All you right. know, many women have abortion done earlier, okay. early or miscarriage early in their life, mm -hmm. due to which infections occur, which block the tubes. Okay. Or there is, you know, genital tuberculosis, okay. or so many other causes which block the tubes. Okay. And then there be, you know, endometriosis, mm -hmm. and so many other factors which can okay. cause female okay. infertility. All right. Olingana is asking, how long can the sperms be frozen? I mean, if you say it's a lifetime, but best best used within 10 years. Mm -hmm. Nobody would keep them more than 10 years, I believe. Okay, okay, okay. But effectively lifetime. Okay. Now, the last question, Atta Maina asking, um, will the frozen sperm just produce a quality kid like any other kid, or maybe he or she might be having problems in future? <laughs> no, the frozen sperm is as good as a fresh sperm. Okay. So you don't have to worry about it at all. All right. Whether you freeze it for one year or 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now, preconceptional genetic screening, maybe you can just take us through and preconceptional <laughs> genetic diagnosis, because now, when you talk about screening and diagnosis, I understand these are two different ballgames. Sure. Yeah. So, now, preconceptional pre genetic screening or pre-implantation genetic screening mm -hmm. or PGS is more being defined as pre-implantation pre genetic mm -hmm. testing. Mm -hmm. So, in that what happens is that we can, a woman who has got previous problems with infertility okay. or who has had IVF before mm -hmm. but didn't conceive, had abortions in the past or multiple miscarriages, okay. when she undergoes an IVF, we take the embryos, we do the biopsy of the embryos, send them for genetic testing. Okay. And from that, we know whether that embryo is good or bad. Uh -huh. So, genetically, uh -huh. aneuploid or, I mean, euploid or aneuploid, that uh -huh. means good or bad embryo, uh -huh. genetically. Okay. It's a good embryo, then we transfer it inside the uterus. Okay. Okay. Also, there may be history in the family of genetic diseases, uh -huh. or in the husband or the wife. Okay. So, we test the embryos for that particular disease okay. and that is called as diagnosis. Okay. Screening is a general screening, diagnosis is specifically for a particular disease. Okay. So we do that okay. by doing the, and we are doing that in Medihil, mm -hmm. we do that by doing laser shooting of the embryo and then removing the inner cell mm -hmm. and then sending it for testing. Okay. And we get the reports in 48 hours. Wow, interesting. Now, um, African society. And this, so uh, I'm sorry, the, yeah, just sure. to extend this, yeah. this can also be used for mm -hmm. Gender selection. Ah, okay. So to you know whether it's a boy or a girl, you can make out from the embryo. If there's a boy embryo or a yeah. girl embryo, you can actually make that means X Y or X X. X X. Okay. And then you insert, you transfer the embryo according to the wishes of the, the chromosomes couple. and everything. Yeah, everything. Okay, everything. interesting. Now, in African society, sometimes we are into into religion so much, and uh, sometimes you know when you talk about the processes, the IVF and everything. Um, uh, sperm freezing and everything, um, maybe uh, it, it's it's kind of mind-boggling to some people in the religion sector, uh, religious sector that is. Um, do you think maybe it's uh, it's wise, with the fact that some people are coming out, maybe guns blazing and about uh, religion competing with God, trying maybe to kind of uh, take shortcuts with the with the real situation. Maybe what's what's your opinion on this? Well, I don't really know because you know, I mean, um, more and more. People yeah. are accepting these uh -huh. technologies. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There was once upon a time when uh, a woman who had a problem with her own eggs okay. or an older woman uh -huh. would shun uh, uh -huh. taking donor eggs from another, from an egg donor. Okay. Okay. But today more and more women are accepting egg donation. Okay. Okay. They come to us for third party, we call it a third party reproduction, wow. wherein wow. an egg donor is used to give eggs, of course an anonymous egg donor yeah. is used to give eggs to this woman okay. who does not have her own eggs mm -hmm. or who is, you know, her ovaries are fired, mm -hmm. she is older than 40 or 41. Okay. So she is accepting that. Even a man is now putting his ego aside mm -hmm. and accepting to have donor sperm if he has got problems with his uh -huh. own sperms. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, ir irreversible problem with the sperms. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel the society is accepting these new technologies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No? Now, um, w when you talk about uh, blastocyst culture, and of course now uh, what is shared between the risk program of IVF, maybe hey, you can talk, maybe take us through that because it's, it's a, a, yeah. a much is technical, but maybe you can take us through that. So to make it simplified, you know, when we make the embryo, the embryo usually we transfer the embryo three days after the fertilization. Transfer means put it back into the womb. Okay three days after the fertilization of the 
egg with the sperm using the ICSI technique, which I was telling you earlier okay. about. Okay. So, when the embryo is now extended to day 5, not day 3, but day 5, mm -hmm. it becomes a blastocyst. Oh. And the picture that you saw of the laser was yeah. of the blastocyst. Okay. Okay. So, that blastocyst is more closer to life. Okay. It's almost the earlier stage of life. Mm -hmm. And if we transfer that blastosis inside the uterus, okay. it seems that there is a very high chance of mm -hmm. getting that woman pregnant. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we do blastosis transfer mm -hmm. in 40 percent of our women. Mm -hmm. 60 percent we are still doing the conventional day three transfer okay. of the embryos. Mm -hmm. But blastocyst is day five. We extend the culture by two more days and we give the woman the benefit of getting Okay. higher chance of pregnancy. Okay. Now, has there been any complication maybe with your follow-up from all the processes, with your follow-up, have you ever experienced any complication from a client who came to you and now maybe came back again for some correctional uh, surgery of some sort? No, we don't get correctional surgery complication, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we get a complication which is not that severe, okay. but it can become severe if you, do, if you don't handle it well. Okay, okay. And that is called ovarian hyperstimulation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. in order to get the eggs from a woman, mm -hmm. we just, just don't need one egg. When we do IVF, we need multiple eggs. Okay. So we give her injections for 10 days in order to stimulate the eggs in okay. the ovary. Okay. So when we are doing that, some women, they respond very highly. Uh -huh. And they may, you know, some women they may get 20, 25 or even 30 eggs. Okay, okay. So in which case they can go into what is called as ovarian hyperstimulation. Okay. Ovarian hyperstimulation can lead to a lot of problems, you know, mm -hmm. renal problems. And she may be, ha in a severe degree, she may have to be admitted to an ICU. Okay, okay. But of course, we are very careful. Mm -hmm. We know we identify these cases very early, okay. even before we start the stimulation. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We give them the planned protocol according to their needs. Okay. And we control the hyperstimulation as much as possible. Okay, okay. So that's probably the only uh, complication, complication that can occur in IVF. Ah, okay. Not so, not so serious. Now, yeah. um, can someone bear a child, for example, two children by the same process or three? Yeah, it can happen. It Multiple can happen. pregnancy is known to occur in IVF. Wow. Okay. Because, you know, basically as a standard, we put three or four embryos within the uterus mm -hmm. in order to give a better chance. Mm -hmm. So, at least, you know, depending upon the age of the woman, if the woman comes to me below 30, like she's 27 or 28, I'll just put two embryos inside her wow. or a, or a one blastocyst on day five. Okay. You know, okay. if she comes to me above 30, I might try, I might have to put three embryos. Okay. And the closer she gets to 40 or above 40, then I'll have to put four embryos. Wow. This is to give a higher chance for her to conceive because uh -huh. she's uh -huh. older. Yeah, she's older. Okay. She's older, she's older. The older the woman, the more mm. the embryos we have to Absolutely. put in. Absolutely, yeah. As a result of this, mm -hmm. two or three may implant and we get twins. Wow. Twins are very often, but triplets and quadruplets, that means three or four, four uh -huh. are very rare. Wow. I think so they're... it is possible. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, a lot of Kenyan women or a lot of African women, mm -hmm. they want multiple mm -hmm. pregnancy. Okay, they want multiple. Yeah, they want mm -hmm. multiple pregnancy. Okay, okay. So, you know, it's not in our hands to design the multiple pregnancy, yeah. but we can the probabilities increase when you do IVF. Absolutely. It's just a, okay. no. Absolutely. Now, laser embryo hatching in IVF. Maybe you can tell us more about that. Yeah, so that video that we were seeing is yeah. our laser hatching, you know. Okay. So, so w w what really happens? Maybe you can now again explain to us because some viewers are kind of very confused here because maybe, maybe uh, mm -hmm. someone, someone who's just uh, Betty Candy uh, is asking now, uh, is it a surgical process or a lesser process? It's, it's very confusing, yeah. yeah. Are you talking about the laser or the yeah, IVF yeah. in general? In, in general now, yeah. The IVF in general is a daycare procedure. It's okay. not a surgical procedure. Okay. There are no scars, no incisions, no scars, nothing. No, yeah. So mm -hmm. when we do the egg retrieval, we do it through the vaginal probe. Okay. You know, there's a vaginal ultrasound transducer right. that guides us and the needle goes along that. Okay. So I wish we had that video, you know. Okay. But yeah. uh, so it shows us the eggs mm -hmm. and we aspirate, the, we remove the follicles. Mm -hmm. So there's no surgical incision, nothing. Mm -hmm. The patient does, has to remain only for two hours on that day, okay. the woman. And the next day when she, I mean, three days later when she comes for the embryo transfer, it's a daycare procedure. Mm -hmm. She just hops on the table, we do the transfer and she goes off. Wow. So that's it. Okay. And uh, as far as laser hatching is concerned, mm -hmm. the laser hatching we do for the embryos, which have got thick walls. Okay. So the thick wall does not allow the embryo to implant when mm -hmm. it goes inside the uterus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we do the laser hatching to thin out the wall of the uterus. Mm -hmm. We make a hole okay. in the wall. Okay. So it goes 
and implants better. Oh, wow, yeah. wow. Now maybe just... Uh, but you know, as, as you know, everything comes with a cost. Absolutely. No, so the blastocyst uh, or the laser hatching yeah. or the IVF also, uh -huh. Uh -huh. So there what's are the cost, cost factors. What's the cost? So IVF, you know, is pretty expensive. Uh -huh. It uh, can, uh, you know, bring you down by half a million. Okay. One IVF attempt. One IVF attempt. Yeah. Okay. And of course, the blastosis and the laser are add-ons. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the, when we do a day five or a blastosis transfer, we charge 50,000 shillings extra. Okay. okay. And uh, that is not included in the initial package mm -hmm. because everybody mm -hmm. is not offered the blastosis, mm -hmm. only certain mm -hmm. patients who meet the criteria. All right. And laser hatching is 25,000 shillings. Okay. Can insurance take care of this? NHIF does take care of uh, civil servants uh -huh. and the uh -huh. NPS. Uh -huh for the IVF. Wow, interesting. So also AON for the teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now for, for, for people who might want really to see you, how can they get you, Doc? So if you can, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm available at Medihill at Parklands, okay. opposite Aga Khan, 24-7. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I mean, you know, except right. for Sunday. Except for Sunday. And when I'm traveling, because I also go to Kigali, Rwanda. Oh, so you have another branch to do IVF, yeah. Okay, okay. And we also have at Eldoret. Okay. All right. So I go once in a month there and, uh, you know, every alternate month to Rwanda mm -hmm. for a few days okay. to do IVF. All right. Amazing. Amazing, Doc. And thank you so much. And good work you're doing, actually. And uh, yes, we have been having so many problems about our society, trying to maybe condemn women who cannot give birth, even men who cannot actually uh, bear children that uh, indeed they are outcasts from our community. But as you can see, we have solutions unto these. And uh, if you have that time, you can go see Doc and he will sort you out. Thank you so much, Doc, for coming. All right. We're now taking a short break now. When we come back, Bona Lotan Salapay and Onesimus Commander will be coming to talk to us about what transpired over the weekend as far as sporting activities work on sun. Now this will be very interesting. Stay tuned to Morning